Hi, I'm Terry Swack, CEO and co-founder of Sustainable Minds. Thank you for your interest. I'm going to show you just how easy it is to conduct a Sustainable Minds LCA. But before we start, I'd like to lay out a few key concepts about designing greener products. There is no such thing as a green product. All products use materials and energy and create waste. There's no explicit definition of what green means. The best we can do is make products greener than the ones we make today. Typically, 75% of manufacturing costs are committed by the end of the concept phase. These same decisions often lock in the environmental performance of the product. By the time you begin detailed design, you know what you're making, and it's very expensive to change the design. Designing greener products starts with bringing life cycle thinking and a whole product systems approach to the beginning of the design process. It's no longer about just designing the artifact. There's so much more to design when we have responsibility for the whole product system throughout its life cycle. This approach is called eco-design. LCA has traditionally been used to measure the relative greenness of a product. However, full-scale LCAs are costly, require considerable life cycle science expertise, and take a lot of time. Additionally, they are difficult to conduct and loosely defined or rapidly evolving product concepts. Our goal at Sustainable Minds is to connect eco-design with LCA so you can design truly greener products. You can explore eco-design strategies to generate innovative and greener product concepts and then use LCA to measure the potential environmental impacts of these concepts. Conducting a Sustainable Minds LCA is a three-stage process. You begin by setting up a project, defining its scope and goals. Next, you create a reference concept and then new product concepts to compare to it, interpreting assessment results along the way. Notice the Learn More balloon in the sidebar of most pages. Here you'll find content to support what you're being asked to do on each page. From there you can check the Learning Center for even more information. I'm going to show you the toaster project, the example project, that you can try yourself. The instructions and data are available in your trial account. I'm going to show you a completed project so that you can see the results. In this fictional scenario, a housewares manufacturer Oster has asked us to design a greener toaster than their 2008 Toastmaster. The overview tab displays three concepts. The reference, the concept we've selected to be the final, and the best Ocala score. Notice the best Ocala score is not always going to be the one you choose to be the final. We've set up our assessment goals and scope so let's jump over to the Concepts tab, where it's easy to generate new concepts, explore new strategies and solutions, and compare results. Remember, it's all about comparisons, which ones are greener. Let's dive in and take a look at our reference product. Here on the Overview tab, we summarize the impacts of the reference product. On the System Bill of Materials tab, meaning the Product System Bill of Materials, we've organized the SBOM into three sub-assemblies, metal parts, housing, and packaging. We encourage people to include packaging in their assessments because most products get packaged. The materials can be entered into the Manufacturing tab two ways by manually adding a part and or importing materials from a CAD or PLM system. For a demonstration of the bomb import capability, check out Rob Coey's video, also on the site, for a demonstration of how to import a bill of materials from Autodesk Inventor. Let's take a look at how to manually add a part. I'll start by naming the part, then I'll come down here and select the type of material I'd like the part to be made of, 
I'll select the actual material, put in an approximate weight because the handle hasn't quite been designed, tag it as an estimate, and enter a comment about the source of this part for future reference. I'm going to add that to the system build materials and now add a process. I can see all of the processes that can be done to aluminum and I can scan the columns to see the Ocala millipoint scores as well as the CO2 equivalents, noticing while I scan that extrusion is wildly impactful. We're not going to do that today. I'm going to select powder coating and I'm going to check the amount. It's also an estimate and add it to my system bill of materials. Now that we've entered materials and processes in the manufacturing phase, we can step through the other tabs to enter the information about this product system's life cycle, i.e. consumables in the use phase, end-of-life processes, and transportation, both in the supply chain and on the completed product, to your sub-assemblies and parts. Well, this is the moment everyone's been waiting for, the results. There are a number of different results views, starting with the scorecard, which summarizes the results, the impacts by SBOM inputs, which displays the top 10 most impactful inputs, and impacts by life cycle phase views, in which the life cycle phase with the greatest impacts is displayed. We will be adding more results views soon that further break down results by impact category. The impact assessment results from the reference product inform where the opportunities are for environmental performance improvement and for product innovation. Clicking on the total impacts, we can see that the greatest impacts in the reference are being caused by the end-of-life processes that we designated to the steel parts. Looking at its carbon footprint, we can see greatest impacts are being caused by energy in the use phase. Now that we know where the impacts are occurring, we can explore eco-design strategies for end-of-life and use phase to generate new product concepts that will have better environmental performance than the reference. I'm going to go back to the concepts tab where you can see that we've generated a number of new concepts, some that improve the environmental performance and some that don't. We've selected the Toastmaster disassembly as the final concept in which we remodeled the SBOM to incorporate design for disassembly strategies, which include recycling and reuse of parts at the end of life. Let's see how it compares to the reference. Jumping right to the results views, we see we've achieved an almost 60% impact reduction. Our guidance is that anything greater than a 10% improvement is a meaningful improvement. Be sure to visit the Learning Center for more information on interpreting results. Looking at the total impacts results view, we've eliminated impacts from end of life in the top 10 and now we can see that energy in the use phase is causing the greatest impact. Let's see what happened to the carbon footprint. Even though we've reduced total impacts by 60 percent, we've actually done very little to reduce the carbon footprint. Be sure to keep your project goals in mind to see if you've achieved them. When the design process ends is up to you. So go ahead. Why not sign up today for your free 30-day trial account and start designing greener products right from the start? We look forward to you becoming part of the Sustainable Minds community. Have a great day.